Uh, next question is from Marie Lawson, and she says, uh, I'd love to hear his thoughts and yours. Well, forget a moment. Um, on those uh, multi-fruit trees, this is a good question because I've actually had some, I take that back. I have thoughts on it. Um, I'd like to hear his thoughts and yours on those multi-fruit trees. That's like the five tree you can get at the hardware store, at least um, where you get multiple types of apples or sometimes even different fruit uh, grafted onto one tree. What do you think about those? I think for a home gardener, they're great. Right. Because you may not have room for two different cultivars. And normally the nurseries know which ones will combine. Right. Unfortunately, often they use commercial cultivars on it, which means they're susceptible to disease and so on. I've got you know Macintosh. what a great opportunity would be for somebody to put all disease resistant cultivars and do a three in one. That right. would be fantastic. Like you put Sweet 16, you put Nova Spy, and you put uh, Nova Easy Grow. Which or do American, the three yeah. Nova ones, you know, Nova Mac, Nova Easy Grow, and Nova Spy. There you right. go. Nova Scotia, uh, your, your provincial uh, agriculture department did a great job of developing some yes. really good disease resistant. I like them all. They're all really nice. And the fact that, look, you don't need to spray anything for scab. I'm all, I'm all in. Like, give me more of those. They're, yeah, they're great. So, yeah, that's a good advice. Um, yeah, because the ones I, I bought two of these, this one I didn't know, I just said, I want to grow apples. Look, I want to have apples, you know, and, and, and this five tree thing, this sounds awesome because it's five different things and sure. they pollinate each other and all this sort of stuff. Um, but what do I get on there? I got delicious apple, which I hate. <laughs> and they're not delicious. Um, I'm going to offend some people listening, but I can't stand them. Um, the Macintosh, most disease ridden apple on planet, um, you know. Um, and um, it's got the it's got the delicious and the golden delicious. Actually, I don't mind a golden delicious. Golden but, delicious is nice. Um, and it's got it. It does have um, um, what's that really good one? Stores extremely well. Usually a big honey crisp. So it's got a honey. It does have a the only apple on the whole tree that I really like is the honey crisp. But what I do not like about these trees is that each branch is a thing. And so when you're prune and, and you buy them, they're, they're five feet high. When you buy them, you got to prune it, right? Because it's, it's not oriented right. And you cannot remove certain branches. You just can't. Like, so my northern spy, it's just a northern spy. So any branch I want to remove because it's, it's in the wrong place or whatever, I can just cut it off. But with those five yeah. trees, you are stuck. I mean, I got one branch that's two feet off the ground. It's underneath the whole tree. And if I want honey crisp, that branch is the honey crisp branch. Um, you know, so that is what I do not like about them. You have almost you know, no options for pruning whatsoever. You, you sort of, you got to work with them. And this would work really well with your no prune approach, I suppose. Yeah. Well, but, I'd I mean, say start, a with, grown those, tree. start yeah. with those trees because it, it's a, it's kind of a good introduction. The choice of cultivars isn't, I, I got to say, it's not the best because they just do the ones people want to buy what they know. And you need to know that most of the fruit you know about are the worst no, ones to grow. <laughs> I think you talk about that in your video too. Um, yes. Um, actually, we're not going to talk about it here, but I, I'd love to have you back to talk about, um, you know, what's that called? Grafting. Uh, I'd love to talk about grafting. Do you have videos on, I guess that's a better question. Yep. Do you have videos yeah, on grafting? Yep. Okay. We did one good one this spring, just grafting with the grafting tool. Cause that's what I really recommend. If yeah. people start, don't start with a knife there. It's, it's the most dangerous. If you're not, you know, really proficient with an, and I'm talking a kitchen knife, but I'm talking, you know, like to whittle. Uh, it's, it's pretty dangerous. It's pretty dangerous grafting with a knife. People say, Oh, come on. You know, I've done, yes. Cause you've done it. And, but you look at people who've grafted for a long time, take show, let, you know, let them see their, your hands and <laughs> You will see some serious scars on there. I have the hardest time. I do not. My, actually, I'm still, I am going to ask you since I got you on here. <laughs> I can't resist it. I have the hardest. I've tried it twice and I failed both. I haven't filmed any of this because I don't know what the hell I'm doing. Um, I think I did a good graft, but I think uh, I can't remember. The name's not coming to mind. The, the branch you removed to be grafted, there's a name for that. The um, uh, Scion. Scion. I do not understand when to cut that off, 
And I've done what people have said. You put it in a bag and put it in your freezer and then you grab it and nothing. Not happens. in the freezer though, in the or fridge. fridge. Sorry, the fridge. So what time of year do you cut that off? As long as it's dormant, which means the bud has not begun to swell and especially hasn't opened to show you any green. So you can, in our area, we can still cut that if, and we can graft the same day as long as it's limit early May is usually the limit in our area. April right. works well. You could still do it where you take it off and you graft it right away. Ah. But usually, uh, because I'll be doing, say, a few hundred sometimes, so I will harvest them mostly in March, which is when I'm pruning anyway. Yeah. When you're pruning, and ideally when there's snow on the ground, so your, your sap hasn't really begun to rise much, that's a good time. And then you, you, just, you, you take those and you, you put them in a plastic. Do you, is there anything special to do? Do you wrap it? And no, actually, I used to wrap it. And in fact, I even did a video on how to store it. And you some have a video that, on that. Yeah, somebody told me that the way of wrapping, because I, I had learned to wrap it like vegetables, but they've been finding that uh, basically wrapping them dry, just putting them dry in a bag, they, they will keep as long as you put them in water before grafting with them, they'll reabsorb the water. But if you put them in a wet paper towel, which is what I used to do, you do get quite a few of them will mold and then that won't work. So anyway, there's different, everything in, in grafting, I call it, it's like cooking. You know, you have a recipe. If you have a recipe that works, then work with it. Don't mess with it. Somebody has given you a good recipe, do that and you'll have good success because See, it takes a while to get the, the little details of what makes it work better. Exactly. So you cut them in March. Let's yep. just say, let, let's do a recipe here. You cut them right. in March, you put them in a plastic bag, you put them in your refrigerator. Put them in the crisper where you keep your vegetables because that's a little humidity. moister. Yep. Now, let's say in, in April, I'm going to graft these on. Uh, you're saying take them out of the fridge and then put them in water like you'd put roses in a vase sort of thing? Right. So are they in water at room temperature? Are they in water overnight for how long? And at what, uh, do I want them in water outside, inside, in my garage? In yeah, because usually when I'm grafting, I want them, I want them, it might be sunny day, so I want them sitting in some water. So I'll put an inch or two in the bottom of a small bucket right. and I'll just carry them around in that. I'm not just carrying some dry pieces of wood. So are they in the water overnight? If they're really dried up, like right. if they look like they're starting to shrivel, then I would do it overnight. Okay. But otherwise, if they've been kept fairly moist, uh, just as long as you put them in in the morning and then as you're grafting either in the morning or the afternoon. Is it important to know where's the bottom and where's the top? <laughs> yes. <laughs> Yeah, they don't grow upside down very well. Okay, maybe. Yeah, the could, buds, could be what I did wrong right there. Well, the buds are oriented, the buds so they're oriented, always yeah. pointed up towards the right. Always pointed up. So that's important. It's, it's when you're when you, not only when you're putting them in the silk, but when you're grafting them on, you don't want to graft them on backwards. Right. <laughs> it's actually, it, you know, it. I I try to encourage people just try some. I it, have to try it this year. I, it's I not it that hard. Year. But it's the mystery of it. It's like, oh, I don't know. I look at it as, in French, we say habitant. It was, the, it was a peasant practice. Like every peasant knew how to graft. Right. And so it's not something that's that complicated. Everybody used to do it. An, an illiterate man could teach his illiterate kid how to do it. Uh, <laughs> so. As long as you're not illiterate about grafting. So that's the thing. <laughs> You gotta, you gotta just, if you've seen it done and watch a few videos, really, that's what I'd say. Yeah. Watch a few videos, watch one of mine on using the grafting tool from this spring. That was a good one because it shows you step by step. It's fairly long video, but it, it's really, look, here's how you do it. This is the step, then this, then this, then this. And it, it's really quite simple. Once you've tried and in that video, I, I did an English and a French one. I think the French one, I even show a demo of two people that I was showing how to do it and they did some. So mm -hmm. you could see that, okay, you know, I'm not quite sure, but, and, but it's not that hard. It's really mm -hmm. not that hard. Once you've done a few, I say, once you've done 50, you think, well, I'm never going to do 50. 
so just take some branches, sit down in your living room and just practice. You don't have practice. to be doing it. Uh, you don't have to do it in on your tree. Don't do your first one on your tree because right. you might only have two branches of cyan wood. And you don't want to waste your precious branches for practice. So take some branches that you pruned off your tree, sit down and practice and just practice. And it's like any technique, you know, a brain surgeon, you don't want to get him on his first brain surgery. No. But after he's done 50, he could almost do it with his eyes closed. Well, it's yeah, the yeah. same with grafting. <laughs> That's right. I certainly, I want to take uh, some of those, uh, the honey crisp off of the bottom <laughs> branch of my five tree and graft them onto my, uh, my uh, northern spy. Uh, yeah, that's, up nice and high where they can get beautiful sun and, and you know. <laughs> yeah, that's actually a very poor choice because Honeycrisp is one of these uh, least vigorous trees. It doesn't grow very vigorously. Really? And so you always want to graft that high. You want to graft it ideally on the leader so it will get maximum amount of energy. Yeah. Because otherwise it just, it'll languish. It's That's, that's what, what it does. You know, growers are finding that it's, you have to, like even for rootstock, let's say you want a semi-dwarf, we'll plant it on a standard tree because it'll give you a semi-dwarf. Or if you want a dwarf, plant it on a semi-dwarf rootstock and it'll give you a dwarf because it's it's one level down in its vigor. So. Oh, that's, that's a useful tidbit right there. Um, all right, next question. Okay.